I have this look. I can actually, let me just, I can save it as like an idea to come back to in my reference library. And then I can also uh, save this look here from untitled to like, let's just call this bball underscore one, but just starting from scratch. So inside of here for magic bullet looks, you can kind of fish through the catalog here, which has got some pretty amazing stuff. When you're shooting with something, the newer cameras are all HDR capable. I would say 90% of the newer cameras are all HDR capable. When they have about 13, 14 stops of dynamic range, they're all HDR capable from DSLRs to the cinematic cameras. So, um, you know, you, you can work in this little HDR section here. You can even just go film setups. This is literally a really diverse catalog just to shop through and to get you to a good spot. This necessarily doesn't have to be the way you land, right? And the, ma the major thing I would say is like, yeah, you save out your preset. So when you save these out, you can actually go through and let me just show you on the Mac side. So if you're on a Mac side, you can save it. It becomes this little file that lives right here. Computer, documents, red giant, magic bullet looks, then presets, my new looks. And that's because I made this right here. See what it says, custom looks. I call that my new looks, but if I were to make another one, it would just simply, if I go back here, you'll see these are all those categories. These match those folders that I've made here inside of my custom looks. You can make all your different collections based on project, based on client, whatever the case may be. And then you can ship those over and the colorist, here's the flip side to this, right? So if I take this one here, or even I think it was in custom, right? So the one that I just made, where did I put it? There it is, B-Ball 1. So I'll reapply that and I'm in here. And let's say for instance, I'm going to blow this away. And this is, uh, I just sent the timeline over to the colorist and you can apply these by the way. I always make it, I always like making a second note here, but you can apply these if I go to my effects, open effects and go to magic bullet in the color page as well. And let me just type in looks, there it is. I can just drop it on a node here. So now it's in their chain. If there's anything to get comfortable with inside of Resolve, just understand the very basics of the color page when you're trying to do this, if you want to make it easier on yourself to convey your ideas. And then look, I applied that same preset. So let's say I came from pre, uh, Premiere and now I'm going here to Resolve and I just make the node and apply this in the color page. You can even make these as favorites too. See a little star in the corner. So that becomes a favorite and then now it'll populate up here. So if I do this, that populates with all my favorites here. Now apply that. This gets applied to a node. You can also change your input color space. So if it was log footage or if it was, you know, 709 footage, but by default, when you're coming out of this to make sure that you don't have any issues, I would keep the output in sRGB, I believe. For right now, that's the way to keep things consistent when you exit out of this. And when you go back into Resolve, you're not going to notice a major shift. There's also to, one thing to be aware of is the color management inside of Resolve. That's something that I'll let Diego explain a little more. So again, you can put this in here just as a simple color node. And now instead of it being on the edit page as an effect, the same thing is available in there. If you did it in Premiere, you can ship that over. The effect is not going to transfer over, but your preset, all you have to do is kind of point to the presets. And if you wanted to take it a step further, go to the color page here, and then just apply your preset to this note. 